Dharmic, you're one of those people <laughs> in this demographic that is using Bitcoin. So why did you start using Bitcoin? Um, because technically, uh, you can also see uh, crypto as a way, like an alternative to a bank where I'm putting it in to save over time. You know, just keep it there. And what's why it helps me keep it away from a bank so I don't spend it. <laughs> so, wait, 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 hold on. So wait, you put in money into Bitcoin because you want to mm -hmm. save money. Yeah, it's it's a alternative way, like compared to putting it to a bank. Yeah, I just put it into my own personal account. But what's the difference? Here, here we go into the riskier part of Bitcoin is of or crypto in general is that there is possibility of your the money put in to skyrocket or go to nothing. So you're playing that risk or that I gamble. Know I only put in money that I'm okay with losing, so I put in like you know. Whatever spare I have from a month and I put it in, then I leave it there and don't touch it. Okay. Interesting. I don't understand how that equates to saving money because there's a risk that you could lose all your money also, right? Okay, so not all cryptocurrencies are exactly risky. Some are, they are so stable coins and stuff that those are slightly... Okay, I, I, I don't have to explain it. Like, their value is... Uh, based on a real life object. So some coins, like some cryptocurrencies might use the US dollar or gold or something as their value. So you put it in, then you that that money that you put in will follow that the value of that particular object. Mm. I know you've explained the basics, but what exactly are these different coins? How does it all work? So there are actually quite a few number of different cryptocurrencies, like what Damik mentioned about stable coins. Those are actually really popular and I would say it's one of the key pillars of cryptocurrency. So just to elaborate a little bit on stable coins, the most common type is the US dollar stable coin. Uh, they are USDT and USDC. These are the very popular types and they basically are pegged to the US dollar. Mm -hmm. So essentially, it's just the US dollar as a cryptocurrency. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that is actually one of the best ways to save money if you are in a country with high inflation and your currency is rapidly deteriorating against the US dollar, which many currencies are in this period. Mm. Yep. Mm. Mm. So if you want to move on to something that's a bit riskier or because you think that the US dollar doesn't hold its value over a long period of time, which is actually a, a fact, you might want to look into Bitcoin or Ethereum, which are cryptocurrencies that have more than just the purpose of transferring money, but also has a store of value principle over a long period of time. So Bitcoin was created after the 2008 uh, financial crisis, mm -hmm. where they basically, the central banks had this mortgage crisis and they had to print a lot of money to save the financial system. And all of this money that they printed, it was in the billions or even, even trillions, were, would actually debase the value of citizens' savings. So um, the creator of Bitcoin basically felt that, that that was not very fair to the average citizen. And one of the reasons, that was one of the reasons why he created Bitcoin as a way to sort of absorb the additional money that gets printed. So every time central banks print money, some of it goes into Bitcoin and therefore that makes Bitcoin has somewhat of a store of value property. But the next one we have is Ethereum, which is a smart contract platform. Mm -hmm. So smart contract, if we break it down, it's smart and contract. And a contract is basically an agreement, right? Yeah. If certain conditions are met, then certain actions will be executed. So a smart contract is like having a lawyer, but written in code. And this can create basically a lot of possibilities in the realms of automation, in the realms of removing the need for a physical third party and replacing them with code that you know that you can actually read, verify, and you don't have to trust that this third party um, to actually execute. Because what if the third party is corruptible? What if he makes a mistake? What if he gets hacked or someone were to force him to do something else? With code, these are not possible. There are many other types of cryptocurrency, but I would say uh, these are the three main types. We have stable coins, we have a store of value, and then we have a smart contract platforms like Ethereum, uh, which are also known as layer one uh, cryptocurrencies. 
and that's where a lot of different applications gets built on top of them. And because they all use smart contracts, um, Ethereum does, does well in that sense. It's like building another internet. You know, like listening to that actually does blow my mind. Uh, firstly, of how ignorant I, I am, because you're right, like inflation is a real thing. And so much of our life savings, all this energy that gets put into, you know, accumulating our wealth is at the hands of the government. I like that you mentioned energy, mm -hmm. because if you think about it, um, so this can get a little bit geeky, but if we know about uh, thermodynamics, energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing work for someone, you get money in exchange, right? And that's essentially your energy that you put out being transferred into a store of energy in the form typically of our fiat currency, our local currency, correct? But the government has this ability to actually... I would say the, the central banks have the ability to print money out of thin air. So whenever they print money, they're basically taking all of the energy that you have saved and transferring it to them. So that seems a little bit unfair. And that's why uh, Bitcoin was created. Bitcoin is like a life vest that they can put their energy into. And it is separate from the financial and monetary decisions of the government because Bitcoin has its own monetary policies that is set in stone from the creation and is transparent and everybody knows when what's going to happen to Bitcoin in terms of its circulating supply and how much gets printed every every day, every year sort of thing. So energy is a pretty interesting way of looking at Bitcoin. Why, why do you think Bitcoin has then fluctuated so much in recent years? Well, I, I would say as more and more people know about the financial system, uh, during COVID especially, where everyone is basically locked down at home, they have nothing better to do, and then they hear of their friends making a lot of money from cryptocurrency, they go and check it out, they want to invest or speculate in that, and that's why we have like a really strong bull market rally. But then, because Bitcoin is an alternative to the fiat system, when the fiat system um, goes lower in value because of low interest rates, uh, interest rates are sort of like a price on money, right? When you deposit money and there's high interest rate, you earn more money. So interest, the price of money is higher. But during COVID, when the central banks reduce the interest rates to zero, essentially, it means that the price of money becomes near zero. And when the price of money becomes near zero, right, as the denominator of everything is priced in, yes. it will trend towards infinity as well. Think of it like gravity. Right. If there's zero gravity, you can float anywhere. Your valuations can go as high as you want. Mm -hmm. But as interest rates start to rise, as what, what, what is happening right now, sort of like gravity is rising again, and therefore it's pulling all of the prices and valuations back down. Right. So that's why we see uh, things like as risk assets especially having a huge reaction to monetary and fiscal policies of governments and central banks. I see.